morning we're going to cover how to find invalid dates using T-SQL. Uh, I would just want to really quickly point out that T-SQL is not the most effective language for finding invalid dates. I would definitely use C-sharp over T-SQL just because it's it will find way more exceptions than T-SQL will. But that being said, I also understand that um, some individuals are database developers and so that T-SQL is the only language you get. It's really the only language that you use. So I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll talk about that. So on my uh, my GitHub under teaching examples, I have a SQL file date parse, which I will open up in just a second. What I've done is I've broken it down into the three different ways in which you can look at. So it really depends on your data set. One of the things that I always do is I play around with super dirty data, and then I try to actually create exceptions to the rule in my columns um, based on what I know about programming. So it's like if I know that the function uses uh, an approach or a method to uh, to recognize dirty data, then I'll try to break that method just to see if it's effective. And so this does use SQL Server 2012, which I do not have on this computer, so I can't unfortunately show it. Um, but I'll just go over the three approaches here. So this is under uh, the GitHub uh, SQL Server teaching examples and then date parse right here. So that's where it's at. Okay, so um, you have three Navarkar maxes. You'll put in your date column here that you're wanting to test or validate and then your table that you'll want to, um, to check on. And so what it's going to do is it's going to auto do it by counting uh, the validation. So if you're in 2012, this is really useful because it'll do all three. So what it's, the first one is going to count the number of valid date columns and what it will do, and you'll, well, you'll want to note this, if you don't want is nulls, you'll want to remove this portion that I'm highlighting and then put the quote date day uh, inside of the is date function, okay? So it's looking for is date. This is a function that validates date if it's one. And is null, uh, is null basically will, if it's a null, it'll throw in a valid date so that it'll pass the is date. Um, but again, if you don't want nulls, remove the is null, okay? Then the other one is a common table expression, and we use one of the slowest functions, and I'm warning you because it is very slow. So I was dealing with, what was it, 560 million rows of data or something, and it was, yeah, I, I realized it was going to take all day, so I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. But this is very slow, but you can do it on like 100 rows of data. Get some really dirty data and then use it. What it'll do is if it can't convert it, it'll put it as a null. And so it grabs it from the table, and then it does a count as well. On this one, though, note, hold on one second. So this one is validating the date. I should just alert you that uh, where date is null. Uh, this is actually looking for where the date is null. So this is looking for, yeah, where the date is. Um, so this is actually just selecting out a portion of those values. You might want to remove this where clause. I'm trying to think of why I had put that in there. So. Um, but yeah, this where clause more than likely should be removed. So one second. Technically, with try convert, it should return everything. But just because of the way programming works and functions are on the back end using uh, various processes, you'd, you'd be surprised what can get through. Okay, and then finally, we use the uh, common table expression where we're we're selecting a case win, and then we're saying. If the value, we're going to try to cast a date, and if it's between a certain time frame, which obviously is the current time frame, and we're starting at 91. Now, you may want to use earlier, so note the 91. You may want to use much earlier. Then we're going to go ahead and, and produce the result. Otherwise, we're going to throw a null, and then we're going to count. And then you'll notice we throw the, the operator, so we're actually applying the same filter that we applied above, right? Except we're using it. But we're applying the same operator that we used above on the is null. So this is filtering it right here, and then this is another filter. And so the idea is that any exception should, should catch. So I would test this on some really, really dirty um, date data, but you'll notice that a lot of the times you'll get different results. And that, by the way, is what should happen, uh, because those are not all doing the exact same thing. And so when you get the different results, it's very fascinating to see what we'll still get through. For those of you who don't know, if you try to insert invalid dates into a date field, it's going to break. You're going to get an error. And the reason is because you actually haven't either converted it or casted it as a valid date. And so it will throw that error. 